Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
What'd you say? Duh. What did you fucking say? Duh. You, you. Doing a bite to eat. Yeah.
Yeah.
Greetings. What business have you? Master Feyfar, I need to speak with you. I found out something about the counterfeit coin. Did you really? Do tell. Close to Rovna, I came across a wagon that was transporting the false coins. Unfortunately, I came too late. The carter and his men were dead. Damn and blast. Do you know who did it? Yes. A certain knight turned up there. Turned out he was also after the forgers. Well, that is indeed unexpected. Tell me, what did he say? His name is Ulrich. He looked like a knight, but he refused to show his master's colours. Ulrich, you say? Hmm. Could be anyone. Can you describe him? An older man with a moustache. But for all his grey hairs, he seemed pretty tough to me. Hmm. Doesn't match anyone I've heard of, but then we don't even know if Ulrich is his real name. I asked him who his liege was, but he refused to tell me. We live in such strange times. In days past, knights would vie with each other to see who could extol their liege's name the loudest. And today, they take assumed names, hide their emblems and sneak around the land like thieves. I got the impression he was hiding his identity because his masters are odds with Saradzig. That may well be. As a staunch supporter of the king, Sir Radzik has many enemies. He told me that the fake money was being taken to Passau in exchange for gold coins, then that real money was being brought back to the Bohemian lands. That would explain why those fakes bear the Passau counter mark. His master is allied with the Passau alderman, and they told him to sort it all out. I wonder who could be behind it all. He gave me these documents to show you. He seemed to think they prove he was telling the truth. They're the records of the interrogations in Passau and some other things he said you'd understand better than him. Hmm. Let me see. We, the aldermen of the city of Passau, mm -hmm. interrogation held this day, mm -hmm. put to pain by the quester. Okay. The place of origin is a monastery in the land of Bohemia. Hmm. Which certainly confirms my suspicion that something underhand is going on in Sasso. Coin assay report. Copper core coated with amalgam. Ah, but this is interesting. Here's an outlying description of how the forgeries are made. I'll have to study it more closely. We command Herr Ulrich to investigate and let no man stand in his way. This looks like the original safe conduct. It has the seal of the Paso Alderman. But they certainly didn't pen this. How do you know? I recognise the hand. It's a Clement of Caplitz. The high scribe of the Rosenbergs. The Rosenbergs? Who's that? A rich and powerful family in South Bohemia. 
Burgrave Henry the Third is a great rival of our King Wenceslas. So what does all this mean? Well, it certainly explains why your knight is so mysterious. Anyway, we should be careful. And we shall begin our investigation. The documents show they use silver amalgam for coating copper fakes. That's a lead we can follow. Amal what? Silver amalgam. It's produced from quicksilver and silver. Well, that doesn't sound like something just anyone can get hold of. Hmm. You're quite right. You will go to Sasso at once. Look around the forges in the city. Someone must be working copper for them. I, meanwhile, will take counsel with Sir Radzik and then follow after you. Where shall we meet? At the inn on Sasso Market Square. Master Fayfar, Sir Radzik sent me to you. Did he? He must think highly of you. I do the best I can. That's good, because this is damned important. Silver's our most valuable asset. How can I help with these, um, evil forebodings of yours? Hm. Sir Radzik may make light of it, but a large quantity of silver has been discovered hereabouts, and no one is guarding the Skullet's mines, the most likely source. You really think someone could be stealing the silver from the mines? I would have thought that would be quite a job, wouldn't it? It certainly would. Which is why I'd like you to go and check out not only the mine gallery, but also the yard with the smelter and the waterworks. See what kind of state it's all in, and if anything looks suspicious. Is that the yard next to the Scallet's mill? That's the one. I don't know what state it's in now. There used to be a stock of charcoal and smelted silver there. A silver store? Could there really be any left? I doubt it. I'd be surprised if it was still standing at all. What about these waterworks? What's there? A stamping mill and washing troughs. They're on the bend in the river below the castle. You can't miss them. There are big tanks and equipment all around. You said mine gallery. Just one? Boy, there's such a maze there that it would take a week to crawl through the place. There's only one gallery I'm interested in. At the foot of the hill by a small fish pond. Why just that one? Because I was expecting to find a scene there. All the indications pointed to it. So if anyone is stealing silver, it'll be right there. Should I be expecting trouble then? Well, I definitely wouldn't treat the job like a visit to church on Sunday. You could find yourself facing that pack of hungry dogs trailing the army. Or a band of brigands. I see. Well, you and Sir Radzik can rely on me. That's all clear. I'll get going. Take care. Greetings. God be with you.
Ha <laughs> How come you're wearing such fine armor? Is there a joust happening? God be with you. I'm glad to see Good luck, man. Caraway seeds, garlic, and more. Good health to you. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. Oh, no, 
there. Oh, no. It came from over here. God's blessings. God be with you. Good health. God be with you. <laughs> God be with you. Take care. I'd like to... Uh-huh. Proper bath. And my clothes need washing. I'm sure you'll be extremely satisfied. Take care. Yeah. I'll be with you. Uh, I'm looking for a Sukuno. Sukuno? Uh, Baron Rickvold. Isn't this his camp? You won't get nothing out of him. You must be Radzig's man. I heard he was supposed to send someone. Yes, Sir Radzig sent me as a guide. I'm Henry. I'm Jakey. And this here fella, we call the Stone. Oh, I can see why. What's up with him? Cat got his tongue? No. More like the dog got it. The executioner's dog. <laughs> when the executioner ripped it out of him. Anyway, you better come along with me. I'll introduce you to the other fellas and the chief. These here are the Bearman brothers, Petter and Jan. They're a barrel of laughs, except when they're too drunk to string two words together. Like now. Don't get on the wrong side of them, though. When their blood is up, well, it ain't a pretty sight. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Never mind the fancy poses, Stefan. You're trying to kill the fucker, not teach him how to dance. And you, Dangler, stand your ground. Don't let him lead you round by the nose. Sir? Well, sir, this is Henry. From Co... From Lord Cobola. Ah, it's about time Rads had got round to this. We need someone who knows their way round these parts. 
leave off with the uh, bowing and curtsying. We don't hold with that tomfoolery here. Jakey! Where the hell are you sneaking off to? Go to the farm and get water. The lads are thirsty. But I went last time. And you'll go next time, you ungrateful pup. Get your ass moving. Snot-nosed brat. You pull them out of a pile of shit. And they thank you with back talk. Where were we? Oh, yeah. We need a guide who knows these parts. So I hope I can rely on you, Herman. That's Henry. Right. Well, as I said to Radzig, I don't want to carry any dead weight. We could find ourselves in some very tight situations where every sword counts. Oh. I know how to handle a sword, all right? I've heard a lot of fellas say that. They still ended up on the wrong end of one. <laughs> we'll find out. Stefan, take a break. Dangler, let's find out what Harold here can do. Sure. No problem, Chief. Now you're dead. Enough. for that. Son. You didn't fare badly at all, I must say. You can ride with us. All right, good. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for. <laughs> Sir Kuno, can you tell me something about yourself? Drop the sir. That title brought me nothing but grief. But what do you want to know? Sir Radzig told me the Rickvold family uh, lost its wealth. How did that happen? There's all sorts of ways to become impoverished. Nothing easier. Especially when your father's a fool. And your mother's mad as a bat. Oh. 
but it's a long and twisted story. We took our name from Rickval Castle, but that actually belonged to the convent of the poor Clares in Tynitz, and my father only leased it. You see, he knew the abbess there since they were young. Knew her very well. There was even talk that she only joined the order because her family wouldn't let her marry him. Anyway, whether he was fucking her right there in the convent, or he just took a lot of interest in scripture, he spent an awful lot of time in Tynitz. Oh, he might have been after a bit of both. Sinning and confessing all in one place. Well, I can see the convenience of it. Anyway, my mother never had strong nerves. Truth be told, her sanity was always shaky. Pa's escapades drove her cuckoo entirely. Then, one frosty December morning, I was woken by screaming and smoke. I looked out the window. I saw my mother there in the courtyard, wreathed in flames. Behind her, the stables, the farm buildings and the tower were burning too. And she just stood there, shrieking with laughter. Christ, that sounds like a scene straight out of hell. Hellish it was, I can tell you. Me and my sister Adela and a few servants managed to get out before the whole place went up. I couldn't get to my father. Or my little brother. Poor lad was only seven. My sister and I were left destitute after the fire. But then my cousin, Adam of Drevich, took us into his castle. A few weeks later, he offered to buy what was left of our estates and sell me a small fortress near Akovnik. It was a great relief. We suddenly had some hope of a future again. So I told my sister about it. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. A week later, the two of them announced to me they were getting married. And all that was left of our estates, lands, woods, villages, Adela was to get it all as a dowry. But surely that was for you to decide. You were the head of the family, right? I. Only I barely had 17 years under my belt, and I'd just lost everything. Of course, I argued with them, and that was the only excuse they needed to kick me out of Drevich too. <sighs> That's pretty harsh. You're telling me. But I'm not complaining. As my pa always used to say, if you could turn your hand to something, you'd never be lost. I doubt it ever crossed his mind how often I'd remember those words. So Radzig told there's all sorts of ways to become him, but it's a long. Oh. Hellish it was. My sister, a few weeks. It was a great. A week, but I. <sighs> you're telling me. What about your debt to Sir Radzig? How did that come about? A twist of fate, lad. I was fighting in the hostilities between the house of Schallenberg and the town of Colleen. Some trade dispute it was and I fought under the Schallenberg colours. In the end, the two sides negotiated a truce, and I rode to Colleen with a delegation that was to parlay there. We stopped off at an inn on the way, and it was there that I met Radzig Kobila. I could tell at first sight he was a man after my own heart, a likeable rogue with a sharp mind and a merry soul. We spent the whole night drinking together and talking, and in the morning we set off together with sore heads, but in good temper since he was travelling the Colleen same as I was. Only, once we reached the city gates, they arrested me on the spot. <laughs> Seems the burghers had it in for me, since I'd been making their lives hell for a good six months. On the other hand, I was a member of the peace delegation, so by rights, they shouldn't have even looked at me sideways. And then it hit me why Radzig was there. Colleen is a royal city, so he was there to represent the king's interests. I see. So he was on the other side. That's right. Anyway, they threw me in a dungeon, and a few days later, word reached me that the Schallenbergs had reached an agreement with the Burgers. Only part of the deal was they would give them my head, and I'd surely have ended my day swinging from the town battlements if it hadn't been for Radzig. He liked me, and he could see it was a dirty trick, so he somehow squared things with the city council. Lucky for you. Indeed. I owe my life to Radzik, and I'll never forget it. He's asked me twice before for help. This is the third time, and how could I refuse him? 
I'd like to ask about your men. Ask away. What about the fellow they call Dangler? I've never ridden with a better man, I can tell you. He doesn't say a lot, but for that he listens all the better. Nothing escapes him. So he scouts for you? Not just that. It's happened more than once. I was closing a deal with someone, and Dangler told me after that he didn't like the smell of the fellow. Nearly every time he was right, and the fellow tried to stab me in the back afterwards. Those Behrman brothers are quite a pair. Indeed they are. There's no more mercy in them than in, well, a bear. If I told them to skewer you on the spot, they'd do it without batting an eyelid. Jesus. Oh, I. They'd argue first about which one of them got to do the job. But they're as obedient as a huntsman's dogs. Real soldiers, the pair of them. Reliable. As long as they don't get too drunk. Then there's no keeping them under control. But nobody's perfect. What can you tell me about Stefan? Fletching? For one thing, he's a very resourceful fellow. How did he come to join your band? Well, let's just say he was in the right place at the right time. You'll find he has quite a knack for that. What exactly happened? Sorry, I'd love to tell you the whole story, but I'd be betraying his trust. Oh, now you've got me curious. Maybe I should ask him myself. Sure, why not? Our Fletch does love to converse. What about that dumb one? How did he end up with you? The stone? Oh, he just kind of tagged along. Just like that? Aye, just like that. We were riding from Olomots to a castle past Kladsko when we ran into him and some other wayfarers camping along the way. You know how it goes. We made acquaintance with them, had a drink or two. Then we travelled on together. After all, there's safety in numbers. I'm not sure I'd be thinking that if I ran into you lot on the road. We might have done some things I ain't proud of. But wayfarers are sacred even for me. Anyway, our fellow travellers dropped off along the way. One in Mohelnitz, one in Schoenberg, and the rest in Kladsko. Except for the stone. He stuck with us the whole way. The fellas kept asking him what he was after. But of course he never said a word. When we were approaching Barsdorf, I ordered the men to get rid of him. I had some business at the castle and I didn't want any strangers sticking their noses in. Stefan tried to tell him nicely. But he just sat there, staring like he was turned to stone. That's when we gave him the name. Then the Bearman brothers tried to get him off his horse. He booted Jan in the face and knocked him out cold. Then he jumped down and fell Petter with one punch. Oh, a man who can do that is a man you want on your side. So we kept him. Weren't you worried about having a stranger in your band? Especially one who didn't talk. No, I figured if he can't talk, he can't tell. Besides, I've had worse. What about Jakey? Jakey? That boy will be the death of me. You've got to be tough on him, or he's good for nothing. But I'm fond of him, in a way. Like a son? I wouldn't go that far. But I've no family of my own. And unlike those other cutthroats, he seems to me like... like a good lad. Well, you're pretty hard on him, though. And the others keep him on his toes, too. A boy needs a firm hand. I was like him once, and I got the same, too. If we let him be, we'd end up with a third bear man. And who'd want that? <laughs> True. Two is more than enough. Can you tell me something about yourself? What do you want to know? Why do they call you Dangler? 
because Kuno found me dangling on the end of a rope. Ah, I see. So, um, he saved you from execution? I wouldn't call it an execution, exactly. At the time, I was squire to the Lord of Buzitz. That was a proper night for you, full of ideals and honour. I looked up to him as a hero. Then in one skirmish, he was killed, and the foe took me captive. They stood me on a shaky wooden cross with my hands tied behind my back and a noose around my neck, for amusement. Then they rode off laughing. But how long were you stuck there? I couldn't tell you. Hours, maybe days. In the end, everything started going black. I could feel the devil pulling me down by the legs. Jesus! How on earth did you survive? I didn't. When Kuno found me, he says I was dead as a doornail. They cut me down and took the rope off me. Then some came back to life. What of? Stefan, can you tell me something about yourself? Uh, what is it you want to know, youngster? I'm curious how you ended up in Kuno's band. You noticed I don't exactly fit in with this pack of felons and reprobates, huh? Unfortunately, you can't always choose your company, can you? <laughs> no, I suppose not. But how did you come to be with them? Oh, well, I'd love to tell you, but Kuno insisted we keep that between the two of us. And I'm not one to break a confidence. Oh. But... Well, Kuno said it was you who wanted to keep it secret. Really? <laughs> Are you sure about that? You must have misunderstood him. No, I don't think so. At least... Oh, never mind. So, where did you live before? What did you do? I used to live in a town before. Back there I was doing something very different. Although... Now I think of it, maybe it wasn't that different in a way. If you know what I mean. Actually, I haven't the foggiest idea what you mean. You don't give anything away, do you? Me? <laughs> I'm an open book, lad. Ask me anything you like, and I'll give you an honest answer. Go on! Uh, maybe another time. My head's starting to spin. As you wish. Shame, though. There's nothing I enjoy more than conversing. I want to talk to you. Can you tell me something about yourself, Jan? Why not? I haven't been to confession for a while. <laughs> How did you end up in Kuno's band? Ah, it's nothing new for me and my brother. We've been fighting for coins since we were old enough to carry swords. Last time we rode with one Lombardian by the name of Collini. All over Bavaria, Austria and that. What happened? Did you fall out? Nah, we just wanted to come back to Bohemia. You know how it is. When no one understands a word you say, it ain't worth a damn. You and Petter seem very close. As brothers should be, lad. Well, to tell the truth, I'd never have guessed the two of you came from the same mother. Oh, we've got the same ma, all right. I ain't got no ma, and neither does he. <laughs> and the same goes for our pa. It's probably Satan himself. Oh. I'm a bit confused. You're not actually brothers. We might be. We might not. A band of mercenaries found us in a village when I was still a baby, and Petter hardly walking. Playing in the dirt together, we was. Their leader took a shine to us for some reason. He took us away and raised us up. Raised us with swords for playthings and ale for mother's milk. A few years later, he was killed in Saxony. The band fell apart, but we joined another right away. That's the way it's been ever since. Over and over. So you two never had... Well, um... A normal life. We ride from one fight to another, risking our necks and killing who they pay us to kill. That's normal for us. Always has been. Hey, 
Henry, I want to have a so. word with you. Tell me, Stan. Got your eye on some nice winch? True. There ain't many redheads in these parts. I'd like a word with you. Sisters in Colleen. What were they called again? Yeah. And Cutka. One blind, one deaf, and the other dumb. And we could only get the blind one to go for you. Hey, mate. <laughs> Poor lass. Probably taught you for an idiot. And you're Come the here, only I'll one of us who can something. read and write proper. <laughs> you can't blame us for trying to spice up your life a bit. Henry, Did you give her here. a kiss at least? <clears throat> all right, all right. Just asking. Henry, I want to have a word with you. What is it, Jakey? The stone wants to talk with you, if you can call it that. Probably about that ring. What ring? Ah, no one told you about it. The fellas call it the Ring of Bacchus. It's a kind of game we play. Kuno gave us this ring. It's just a worthless bauble. But when we're at the tavern, Kuno pays everything for the man who has the ring. So we steal the ring from each other and try to trick each other. Well, actually, just the others. They won't let me play. Kuno says I'm too young to get boozed up. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. But I don't have the ring, so why does the stone want to see me? He probably wants you to steal it from someone. Since you're new, the fellows will talk to you, and it won't be suspicious. All right. I'll have a word with him. Hey, Jakey, can you tell me something about yourself? Want to get matey, eh? Sure, Henry. What do you want to know? How did you end up in Kuno's band? Well, I used to be a baker's hand in Prague, but all the other fellows were always on my back. Always swearing at me. Sometimes they even beat me up. Took everything I had. To make a bit of coin, I started going to the tavern across the road, entertaining the rich gents with jokes, playing the fool. Sometimes someone would throw me a half groschen. One time, Kuno turned up there, and I got to talking with him. When I told him all the shit I was getting at the bakery, he offered to take me with him. Hmm. I bet you were glad to get out of there. Yeah, though it's not like they give me much peace here either. It's all, Jakey, come here. Jakey, go there. Jakey, get that. Well, surely you can't be any worse off here than in the bakery. No, only at the bakery, the worst I ever got was a beating. It's not like my life was in danger. But here, when those Beerman brothers are drunk, I have to keep well out of sight. How come they bullied you at the bakery? It's usually the shy ones bullies pick on. That's not exactly you. Not now, maybe. I learned a thing or two since then. Oh, come on, you, shy? You just said you were playing the fool and telling jokes in the tavern. All right, I'll tell you the truth. They picked on me because I'm an orphan. The parish priest of St. Apollinaire's in Prague found me as a baby in the church one winter's morning. I spent half my childhood in parish houses and half on the street. I see. That must have been tough. It still is tough, I can tell you that. Tell me something about yourself. What do you want to know? How did you and Jan end up with Kuno? Me and my brother been riding with coin men since we was little. This was just another mercenary band for us. But Kuno seemed like a decent kind of fellow who'd treat us fair. Your brother was saying you rode before with some Kalini fella. He did, did he? Did he tell you why we finished with him? Yeah, he said you missed Bohemia. Ha <laughs> ha! Miss Bohemia! That's good! Ha <laughs> ha But it ain't far from the truth. Jan missed any place where he wouldn't have a band of furious Italians looking to skin him alive. Ah. He did something to anger them. Oh, aye. While Colini was away, he broke into the trunk where the coin was kept. Took it all and wagered it with a fellow who claimed his bear knew how to dance. And lost it all. What? The bear really did dance? Aye. The costliest chardash we ever watched. We had to get the fuck out of there before Colini came back. 
and had the two of us dancing on the end of a rope. You heard this one? This what? This joke, you blockhead. I'm asking if you heard this joke. What joke? You, you haven't told me it yet. It's just a turn of phrase for fuck's sake. If you're gonna tell a joke, you say, have you heard this one? Which one? How am I supposed to know which joke you mean? Because when you're talking to a normal person, you'll let you get on with telling the joke. I'm not stopping you. Get on with it, for fuck's sake. Jesus. All right, so there was this priest who was always complaining about his teeth to everyone he met. One day, he was sitting in the alehouse, and this innkeeper asked him why he was so glum about it. The priest says, My teeth are hanging loose. I'm afraid they'll all fall out. The innkeeper thinks about it and says, Father, my balls have been hanging loose for more than 30 years, and they haven't fallen out yet. <laughs> Look out. Jakey sent me to you. Something about a ring? Mm-hmm. I suppose you want me to get it from someone? Mm. Who has it? Uh. Does Dangler have it? Mm. All right. How should I get it? Hey, I want the Ring of Bacchus. I heard you have it. So you come and ask me for it? Well, that's a novel approach. Well, you don't just have to steal it from each other. Why not play for it? No, I don't play dice. But we can duel for it. All right. Why not? I'll wager the ring, and you put up some groschen, all right? Sure. I'll wager that. Hmm... That'll do it. Well, now it's something worth fighting for. You better watch out. Not a good move. And now 
now. Fuck it. Gone weaker than he Giving it up. Well, at least I won't get so plastered next time. <sighs> Just watch how it doesn't get pinched. <laughs> I'll do that. Thanks. I got the ring from Dangler. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, uh, I suppose there's not much more either of us can say about it. Mm-mm. <coughs> uh, yeah, thanks to you too. Stefan, uh, where is
Should we ride out? Aye. We ought to set out on patrol about now. Hope you've got your kit ready and whatnot. I'd like to head to the north. Is there anything interesting that way? North of here? Uh, Samapesh and Merhoyed are that way. And Talmberg is a bit further on. There's stables in Merhoyed. I wouldn't mind paying a visit to those stables. We can go through there. And from there? From there, we'll follow our noses. Something interesting is sure to turn up. I feel it in my bones. Man up and let's go! Sure. Chief. What a fine day, eh, brother? Indeed, brother. You know what I like best about days like this, yeah? Hmm. The scent of chamomile wafting from the hillsides. Among other things. Ah, like the rounded hills, rising, pertly, all soft and pink in the sunlight. And the fertile valley below, spreading wide and inviting. Dew glistening in a mossy hollow. The sweet aroma of honey in the air. The sturdy poplar, standing tall and erect. Aye, it reminds me of that day. That day, where the two of us fucked Fletch's ma. <laughs> Very droll. You'd make a stuffed bird laugh. Your ma's a stuffed bird. <laughs> I stuffed her myself. <laughs> I can't smell any chamomile. Well, men, how are things? May I? Yes, Fletch. How shall I put it? I'm a little concerned about the prospects in these parts, Chief. Oh? How's that? I've been looking around, and if you'll pardon me, it seems to me that we've been stuck for a long time in the arsehole of beyond. It's not Paris, France, I'll grant you. What I mean to say is, I haven't got any new kit or arrows since the day Jakey joined us. It makes me uneasy, Chief. I see. What about the rest of you? I don't know what Fletch is moaning about. There's plenty of booze and loose wenches nearby. Not to mention fools in the taverns who don't know when to stop rolling those dice. Dangler? It's the arsehole of beyond everywhere we go. And it always makes me uneasy. Jakey? Fletch can complain. I was supposed to get a suit of armor, and all I got was a shitty kettle hat. Sorry, but they don't do hoberks in girl sizes. Oh? Well, how did you get yours, then? All right. I appreciate your honesty, lads. Don't worry. There will be plunder. We're here to fight, and to the victor the spoils. And so it's always been that no purse of silver will shed blood for you on the battlefield. That's what this company is for. And I hope you never forget the golden rule. You can joke all you want, moan all you want, but nothing will keep your skins in one piece better than trusting your leader, who you choose by your own free will. So don't ever forget that. Amen. Let's go! Behind me, and keep your eyes peeled! What do you think we can expect this 
time, fellas. Russian, hidden in a piss pot under the bed. A nice chunk of beef. No one there will be eating. On account of it, it just fall out through the holes in their bellies, eh, hey, brother? <laughs> <laughs> My mouth is already watering, brother. And yeah. I ain't even touched a purse yet. Once you get your hands on some loot, I'll be happy to play you for your yeah. hard then, Grosh. <laughs> Poor old Fletch. Never gets to see the action from yeah. close up. <laughs> what do you expect to find? Yeah. Futility and human suffering. Like always. Always full of good cheer, eh, Dangler? Why don't you take a leaf out of Stone's book and shut the fuck up? Jesus, I wish you'd all shut the fuck up. Keep your eyes peeled, though. There might be someone hiding out here still. Look for clues and question the survivors, if there are any. Jesus Christ, what a massacre. What a pile of shit. I wonder if they found anything valuable at all. They weren't even armed. <sighs> Looks like it happened fast. God almighty. Well, they can't be all that clever or they'd have taken the wagon. No signs of resistance. They simply slaughtered them like animals. Well, poor wretch. to know about this. But not a bit of silver. Would you stop doing that? You think I'll have any use for this stuff? That's not the point. Robbing the dead isn't right. That's what you say. I say it's all the fucking same to them. They're dead. And Prague Groschen are worthless in Lombardy. Never mind in the hereafter. I'm telling you for the last time, stop it. 
And I'm telling you for the last time, I see no reason why I should. You call yourself a Christian? And you're robbing the dead? They've no use for anything, and I have to eat. I've seen your camp. It doesn't look to me like you want for anything. Not now, but a man's got to have something to secure his future. And what did you take from that corpse? Um, a wooden spoon and some string. Oh, great. You can retire right away. I hope it's worth your immortal soul to you. You're a bit holier than thou, ain't you? But all right, they ain't got nothing worth a damn anyway. <laughs> Still smouldering. Whoever torched it can't have got very far. Did the raiders leave any tracks? Well, they came from the northwest. A horse or two and a few men on foot. Anything else? No, nothing. Yeah. What are you doing here? Are you after? Yeah. Yeah. Mo 
Most Venkopun. What have we got here? Entertainment? Great! Ha! 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 What's that? The answer to my prayers. But I'll tell you Just like I wanted to do a bad rage. Could do with a bite to eat. Did you find any tracks? Some, a horse or two. They rode off through the meadow towards dawn. They're avoiding the road, which is interesting. Towards dawn? Meaning towards the east. Apart from the mounted ones, there were some men on foot too. Well weighed down. Well, they can't move too fast then. No, and what's more, they left a trail of blood. One or more of them might be wounded. Either that, or they dragged off some poor bastard from here. Nice work. Thanks.
poor creature. Hunted down like game. Looks like they carried away a lot of stuff. They went this way. Seems they met some resistance at the farm. But at least I know which way they went. What are you doing here? Tired of life? the best you can do. What's 
What's the matter? Come on. All right. Now you're dead. Ow. Is that all you've got? Come here, oh, little Is that her? Shit. <laughs> now, now.
Look what I've got for you. You'll love this.
Kuno, your men are robbing the dead. What did you expect, Henry? Old habits die hard. Most of the lads ain't had an easy life. Well, maybe it's time they turned over a new leaf, then. <laughs> you ought to be a priest. Try telling them yourself, then. If you want to hear some choice swear words. I found this shield in a shed along with a letter. Seems like someone left us a message. Show me that. Hmm. I know that, Chris. It's the house of Zul. A dangerous lot, God's truth. I don't think we'll find anything else here. We'll stay here a while, just in case. And you should go and report to Radzig what happened. What do you know about these Zuls? A family of impoverished nobles. They fought in the Margraviat Wars in Moravia. But what they're after in Bohemia, no idea. I'll ride out right away. Go. Ride like the devil. If they openly left a message like that, then I reckon there's trouble on the horizon. I want to talk to you. <coughs> What's it about, Stefan? Ah, Henry, the very man I wanted to see. I heard you got the ring from Dangler and gave it to the stone. Uh, maybe. Let's not beat around the bush. I could use your help too. I think the stone has had the ring long enough, if you get what I'm saying. I'll help you. I've got nothing else to do anyway. I want to steal the ring from the stone while he's asleep. But that fella sleeps with one eye open. He needs a little help with sleeping soundly. And I've got a feeling you're the kind of man who knows how to arrange that kind of thing. Sure. I'll bring you some sleeping potion. Great. I knew I could count on you. And if you happen to come across that ring, all the better.
Yeah. Greetings, good knight. How may I serve you? Good day to you. What do you need? May the Lord watch over you.
Nechodíval bych do šenku, neši... I'm at your service, Sir Knight. Take care. God save. Good luck, men. Can we do something about the price? Well, we can try it. Are we agreed? It'll take more than that to persuade me. See now, I knew we'd come to an agreement. Yeah. What's that? Hmm, what was that?
God be with you. And another thing. Thanks. May the Lord watch over you. <coughs> Greetings. What do you need? Sir, I'm afraid I have some bad news. We came across a burnt-out farm near Merhoyed. Christ! It seems Pribislavitz wasn't the end of it. Now this is something else, sir. We found a shield there with a crest. A tricolour star on a blue field. I know that coat of arms, unfortunately. It's the house of Zul. There was a letter there, too. Show it to me. Although I think I already know what it will say. Here you are, sir. Unscrupulous beast. Mm -hmm. Cruelty and malevolence. Uh -huh. I challenge you to face me in a duel. Defend your honour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aninomious wretch. Well, that's nice. Mm. Signed, Hagen Zul. As I expected, old grievances coming back to haunt me. This Sir Hagen wants to challenge you to a duel. Apparently, he still hopes I will agree to this kind of outmoded solution to disputes. But surely you can't refuse a challenge to a duel. What about your honor? Henry, my boy, honor is a splendid thing, and it should be held in high regard. But in time, you'll learn that some matters are not so straightforward. Like this one? Yes, like this one. The only reason Hagen is challenging me now is that he has a marked advantage. I've served as the royal hetman for the last 15 years and become a courtier. Hagen, meanwhile, was fighting in the Margraviate Wars in Moravia and elsewhere as a mercenary. Which of us do you think would win a duel? That's not honor, but an abuse of honor. Commonplace opportunism. I don't blame him for trying, but I'm not such a fool as to play by his rules. What happened between you and Sir Hagen? That's a long story. Well, I'd like to hear the whole story, sir, if you wouldn't mind. Very well. It began in the first year of King Wenceslas's reign. He sent me to resolve a dispute between the Zuls and a neighboring house. It concerned land boundaries. The Zuls had refused to accept the ruling of the land court. His Majesty's position was a little shaky after his coronation. So a decision was made in the royal court to take radical action against any dissent in the kingdom. Since the Zul family was defying the king, we were obliged to punish them. Harshly, as the circumstances demanded, the head of the family, Hagen's father, was hanged, their castle razed to the ground and their property confiscated. So, they're out for vengeance. But you acted according to the law. Would it were that simple, lad? I was young and didn't realize the repercussions it would bring. For one thing, the king didn't use it to strengthen his position. On the contrary, he took less and less interest in such affairs. How come? Because he realized things would eventually sort themselves out. He promoted me to royal hetman, leaving him to pursue other interests. Secondly, my actions essentially created another band of robbers. When you strip a nobleman of his property, you can't expect him to take to begging. And thirdly, I wasn't aware at the time that the other party to the dispute was distantly related to me. Naturally, that made it look like I was acting in self-interest. If I'd known what I know today, I'd have been a lot more circumspect. Well, what are we going to do about this? You and Kuno's band will just have to deal with Hagen and prevent further mayhem. The longer he's marauding around these parts, the greater the chances that I'll finally have to succumb to his conditions. So you'd fight him if it came to that? Let's hope it doesn't come to that. But maybe there's something else behind this challenge. Maybe it's coin he's after. Who knows? All right. We'll deal with him, sir. I'm sure you will, Henry. I'd like to ask something about this Sir Hagen. Sure. God be with you. 